Hi everybody, this is Yvadian X from The Candid Frame. And before we start this week's video, I wanted to announce a couple of things that are coming up. The first of which is the 4x5 Photo Fest that uh, takes place on November 18th. I'm going to be there uh, conducting two live interviews on stage uh, with two local photographers for the event. Uh, but there's a lot more going on that day. They have portfolio reviews. They're going to have different uh, speakers, different panels. Uh, this is the second time that they've done it. And uh, I was invited to come down to participate. And I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, not only having an opportunity to meet uh, the phot photographic community down in San Antonio, but hopefully to meet some of my listeners that are, are down there Texas way. So if you're available during that weekend and you can get to it, uh, why don't you join me there? And I'll also be in Miami, Florida uh, in uh, early December for the Miami Street Photography Festival. And there I'm going to be conducting a master, a master course on street photography. They have a variety of different and great street photographers there that are doing workshops uh, over a day or multiple days. But uh, there are also going to be plenty of speakers and panels there, all which is... Com all the uh, the presentations are, are, are free. The workshops you have to, to pay for. But nevertheless, even if you're not attending the workshops, there's going to be amazing work on exhibition, and you're going to hear some just fantastic speakers uh, at the event. But if you want to find out more and register for my uh, for my master course on that day, you can go to MiamiStreetPhotographyFestival.org and sign up. So one of the things I wanted to talk about this week is sort of the rigidity of what is street photography. Um, there's just a lot of people that will go out, out of their way to, uh, to post things on people's photographs and say, this isn't really street photography because of X or Y reason. And for me, I think that's kind of missing the point. Because for me, street photography is one of the most challenging types of photography to practice, but it informs practically every other kind of photography that I do whether it's portraits, whether it's still life, whether it's architecture, uh, an awareness of light in terms of shadow, being aware of shadow and line, uh, being, being able to anticipate a moment, uh, gesture, all of that informs everything that I do. And I think that the trap is to fall into this rigid way of thinking about what is street photography and what isn't street photography. Um, Robert Frank, who did this great book called The American, uh, the Americans back in the in the fifties, um, arguably is a street photographer. But if you look through the images in that book, you'll you'll realize that a lot of those photographs weren't simply taken on the street. And I think a great majority of the pictures that we see on Flickr and on Instagram that uh, sort of adopt the title of street photographs uh, involve people being photographed on the sidewalk. And I think that's a mistake to relegate street photography to just a fixed location. So I wanted to talk about this whole concept using some of the images that I pulled from the Flickr poll. All right, here we have this shot by Venga M. This was shot with a Fuji X-T2, uh, 1 500th of a second, F10, ISO 640. Now, this image is really kind of interesting because it incorporates a lot of the concepts that we talk about uh, in, in these videos, which is an awareness of light and shadow, uh, a sense of line and shape and their importance in the composition, color, and then of course gesture. All, all four of those elements are always really key in order to make a shot really effective. And this was shot, uh, well it seems to be sort of a public, uh, public scene, I'm not sure exactly where um, this shot was made, but all the graphic elements, all the color elements, all the uh, elements of gesture inform the overall composition. And that's one of the things that I have found invaluable in terms of street photography is developing an awareness of all of those things in a scene that is incredibly fluid and is transforming from second to second to second. Uh, if I photograph a flower, I have, the, you know, I have the benefit of time to be able to frame and reframe that, sh that shot of that flower relative to the background and the light. I can be there for two hours if I want to. Um, with street photography, you usually don't have the benefit of that. You're awfully, often encountering a scene that is changing, that a half hour from now is not going to be the same as it is now. So the demands on you as a photographer is to be able to look at all those disparate elements, things that no, normally don't have any relationship to each other, 
and somehow pull it together to make an effective shot. And I think that this shot um, has a lot of those qualities that make it, you know, it sort of elevates it to a point where it's not just an ordinary shot of people walking down the street. I don't know if the shot completely works for me. I think that one of the challenges of this shot is the fact I'm not sure exactly where I want to look first. Um, I see this brown pillar here that really kind of draws my attention. This seems to be really sort of a key here, but we also have this, uh, this very saturated backpack, and we have these silhouetted figures in the, in the back. You know, I think it's a really interesting picture because of what the photographer tries to do here. Uh, and for me, this is fascinating. This kind of stuff really challenges my way of thinking in terms of what I think I can pull off. Uh, one of the things I'm always trying to do is I'm trying to make photographs that I wouldn't have made the day before or last week or last year. If I'm looking at my pictures and they're no different from the pictures that I have made previously, then I'm doing something wrong. Uh, I think uh, Venga's spot on in seeing a scene as complex as this and taking on the challenge of trying to make it as an effective frame. Um, I think a lot of people sort of sit on their laurels and uh, don't take risks and don't take challenges. And I think that this image really demonstrates what's possible. But that's uh, besides the point, because I'm really sort of talking about, you know, these sort of definitions of street photography. So just remember what I just said about this image as we take a look at this next photograph. Okay, this shot was made by YBM. Uh, this was shot on film, so there's no XF data. So we don't have the benefit of color here, but we're dealing with a lot of the same principles as the uh, as the previous shot. Here, line and shape are really, uh, really key here, as is lighting. Uh, you get a sense of depth here because of the difference between light and shadow, dark and brightness. Uh, you have a sense of depth that's created not only by these elements uh, of the stage that are in the background, but actually the mirror that is reflecting another portion of this of this theater, including the chandelier that's overhead that is likely illuminating uh, these people uh, right here in, in this frame. Just like the previous shot, you know, it's considering light, it's considering shadow, it's considering light and form and gesture. The only thing it's not considering is color. But this shot is made indoors. So it doesn't qualify as a street photograph, right? But it's applying the same sensibility in terms of how to compose the frame. And if you look at Robert Frank's book, you'll see plenty of images that were made indoors that weren't made on a public street. Uh, there were shots that he made in restaurants, that he made in pool halls, all of which have that street photography sensibility. But maybe today wouldn't qualify as quote-unquote street photography. And I think that one of the things that we can get trapped into when we're thinking about, okay, I want to make street photographs, is that we exclude a lot of potential images because it doesn't fit this rigid definition of what street photography is. If street photography is only when I'm walking on the street, when I walk into a bar or walk into a restaurant or walk into a store or whatever it is, at that point, the switch is off. You're not thinking about seeing. You're not thinking about photographing because you're you've relegated the process of creating to a specific location rather than being anywhere and everywhere that you go. The skill set that's involved in creating these images could easily have been born from just doing street photography. Uh, you don't necessarily have to be in a theater all the time to make images like this, right? I mean, you have the benefit of all those things, light and shadow and shape and line in the shot, but if you relegated your photography to simply being, well, the only time I can make photographs is when I'm in theater, you really would be restricting the times that you can actually go out and shoot and produce interesting photographs. And I know it's a grand exaggeration, but, you know, follow me here in terms of, you know, how you may think about what you're doing on the street. Are you really keeping yourself completely open when you're going out with your camera to make photographs? So here we have a shot by Shell Serkin, uh, no XF data here. So this is a, a common venue for making street photographs. It's not on the street, but it's in a subway. We see a lot of pictures of people in subway cars and buses. Uh, this is sort of the entryway or the exit for uh, a subway. And you see, uh, even though it's black and white and we don't have the benefit of color, the importance of light, 
terms of shape, line, gesture, all of that is coming into play. Um, the overall setting here is as much of a subject as the guy that's walking down the stairs. Uh, the, the guy who's walking down the stairs is really sort of a secondary element there. It provides a context, it provides a sense of scale to uh, everything else that's in the frame, and provides that all-important gesture that we're often talking about that adds that nice little flourish to the, to the scene, the way he's, he just seems to be hulking down that those stairs with the weight of, his, uh, of the world on his shoulders, the gesture of the right hand uh, extending out as he tries to maintain his balance in this bag, this what seems like a heavy bag on his left hand side, uh, the flyers that are on the on, on the walls that are sort of peeling, uh, the peeling paint on the surface of the uh, of, of the ceiling. There, all of those elements uh, play off together really, really nicely for this shot. And again, it's not on the street, but it's still born of this street photography sensibility, the awareness of light and shape and line, all this stuff. I can repeat it over and over again because at the heart of most of the images that I really respond to are those things, right? So we take a look at this shot and then we take a look at this shot made by Bruce J. Uh, Pat. This was made with a Nikon 7200 at 250th of a second f1.8 640. All right, again, we're in an interior scene. We're not in a subway, but we're in a parking lot. And we don't have a person, we just have cars, a neon sign uh, that's reflected on the on the on the ceiling as well as on the ground. Is this a street photograph? A lot of people would say, no, it's not a street photograph. Then what is it? Oh, it's it's just a photograph. But I argue the fact that, you know, what are the skills involved? What's the sensibility? What is the way the photographer thinking about the scene, influencing the way he captures it. And for me, I, I, I like this shot just like the previous shot because the lighting is the big factor here. It is influencing how everything in the frame is, is, is rendered. The, the fluorescent lights on the other either side of the additional parking sign, the sort of the red glow that's created by the neon on the ceiling, on the ground, all the oil and, and, and stuff that's on the, on the ground, the, the rendering of cars that sort of just, you know, create this sort of convergence towards the center of the frame where the additional parking sign is. All of those things make this shot really interesting to me. And I don't miss the fact that there's no physical human being in the frame. The presence is, is hinted at. It's suggested. Uh, and I think that this is just a, as an effective shot as any shot that I've seen that includes people. Uh, just the inclusion of people in a frame uh, is what people think defines street photography. And we had this discussion a couple of weeks back about, you know, of thinking that street photography is just having people in the frame walking down the street. Uh, we made the point that, you know, observing architecture, line, shape, all those other things with the absence of people can still result in, a, in a, an image that still qualifies as a quote unquote street photograph, but still is a really strong and effective photograph. Uh, this shot is a shot that a lot of people wouldn't make because normally they would just be going to and from their cars. So the whole idea in terms of seeing is completely turned off. But Bruce still had a switch on. So as he's walking through this parking lot, he sees this, sees its potential and makes the photograph. What I'm talking about is always having that switch turned on. That when you go out with your camera, don't get trapped into this idea that, oh, only I can only practice this kind of photography on at these specific locations in order to justify raising the camera to my eye and uh, making a photograph. I challenge you to think that any time you go out with a camera, any moment that you're out there is ripe for an opportunity to make an image if you're paying attention to those qualities that I just I just spelled out. Because I think most people will just miss that. And it's one of the reasons why when people look at a lot of street photographs, they just see the same images over and over and over again. Because everyone's sort of following, following the lead of the people that they've seen before them. And if they see people just making pictures of people walking down the streets, they assume that that's the only kind of picture they have permission to make. And that's not true. You have permission to make any kind of image that you want and don't concern yourself with the definitions. Just go out and make the best photograph that you can make. And don't worry about whether or not that photograph fits into 
a given convention. So I hope that helps you. I hope it challenges you on the next time that you go out. And I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you like what you're seeing here, please subscribe and like this video. And if you're just finding uh, The Candid Frame for the first time, uh, The Candid Frame is actually a podcast that I've been doing for over 10 years, which features conversations with photographers about their work and about their careers. Uh, the most recent conversation which was with uh, Valerie Zandan, uh, who has her own photography podcast on street photography, which you should uh, check out. I'll have a link for it in the show notes. But she's had this collaboration with a hairdresser uh, named Josh Coombs. And uh, what Josh does, he provides his services to the homeless, uh, both in London and Paris and re most recently in New York, where he worked with Valerie, who documented uh, their journey in, uh, in Brooklyn, in Manhattan, uh, providing these services to the homeless. Really fascinating story about giving back with photography and with whatever skill that you have uh, to be of service to others. It's really a touching, uh, moving, and inspiring conversation that I don't want you to miss. And uh, I want you to, to check it out, not just by streaming it here on YouTube, which you can always do, but by downloading the Candor Frame app. It's completely free. Uh, you can download it. There are a link. There's going to be a link here on the website, and if you scroll down, uh, you'll see a link here for the app for iOS and for Android. Windows uh, is no longer valid, unfortunately, so I'll have to take that off, uh, off the site. But the great thing about it is that you can download any episode at your convenience. You can save episodes. Uh, if you like an episode and you want to share it on Twitter or Facebook, you can do it directly from the app. And if you want to contact me directly with recommendations for potential guests or just to comment on the show, you can do so straight from the app. And it's all free, and you can download it uh, today on your Apple or our Android device. So check it out. So thanks again for joining me and I'll see you guys next time.